How do you feel riding hands and heels and you know you've gone gone? How do you feel? How do you feel? Welcome to Wolf Den's Saturday session. Your inside look at all the critical moments in the den and the great game on a Saturday. It's great to be back for another season of Saturday Sessions. We love putting them together for you and it feels as though this spring is coming together quickly and it's gonna be a well above average one. We kick off with Mooney Valley Race 5, the Chautauqua Stakes. Arkansas Kid was super impressive when winning the Regal Roller three weeks ago. After the win, co-trainer Ben Hayes said that they believe he is a talent to win at Everest and he is now on that path. If he can't win and win well today, it's hard to see how any slot holder will be calling the Hayes boys to discuss a deal. Boys, we're back. Another season of Saturday Sessions. How's the atmosphere? We pumped? I'm ready to back winners. My best bet of the day just got the cash in. up north in Brizzy. And I'm ready to rip right in. I was losing before that. So hopefully the tide's turned. We've got the Chautauqua Stakes. Arkansas Kid in a bit of an Everest trial. How's he looking in the betting king zone? Oh, he's super solid. He's around the dollar ninety mark. Um, as you can see on your screen there, two dollars into into one ninety. Now coming into one eighty five. So he's dominated betting. They haven't really backed a lot um, to beat Arkansas Kid at all. I've had a small bet on uh, Savannah Cloud. I thought Savannah Cloud or Arkansas Kid would win, and I've just gone with a bit of value. All right, they move in here for the Chautauqua. We've also got. Junior and Smalley over on the editing desk that can give us some race calling. That You won't be able to see them, but that's okay. They'll give us insight and analysis through the afternoon, and also a little bit of race calling. Mm. Little Arkansas deep. Kid's in a good spot, right? Yeah, Arkansas well, Kid's... If he can relax. He's a bit mm. keen, you can see, yes. in, in the jockey's hands. Little Deep smoking his pipe out the back. Jamie on the board. Looks a bit of a genuine tempo. Snapping never really goes too slow. It's getting moving on Arkansas Kid now, actually. Yes. Positive yeah. riding. Savannah yeah. Red Cap last. Yeah, yeah, Savannah's gone. Pumped along. Little of deep Arkansaw travels pretty right good. There when it matters. Arkansas Here we gets go. his chance. They come into the straight. Yeah. Well, the Little deep X and, probably and Z horse, Desert Lightning. Yeah. He's flat. He's a little deep. Fall. Here comes now. Jamie. Wow. The, uh, the Everest Dream is, is dead. Nice win by Jamie. Yeah, if you thought that Arkansas Kid might be better suited in a higher pressure race like this, but he just crumbled today, yeah. so he's just not up to it. Good to see Jamie up. riding a few winners too. She rode uh, Niles Murphy earlier in the day for the great Costa Cheryl Lambus. Randwick Race 7, the Concord Stakes. This is the first serious pathway to the Everest, a much-anticipated race where no one doubts the two favourites, Giga Kick and Bellin and Patina, are the horses to beat in the race, and also the best horses. However, many think they are vulnerable being first up over the very sharp 1,000 metre distance. King Zone, yeah. how is the betting looking? Well, Thursday on the Saturday set, I thought Giga Kick was pretty short around the 260 mark, and the market is agreeing with me. Uh, as you can see on your screen there, $3 out to 4 dollars now, Giga Kick, and will continue to ease, I think. The one that they put all the money on is I and me, $9 into $5.50. Uh, it's very leaderish there at Randwick today. It's I and me probably will go straight to the front and is very much suited. Uh, Bella Nipatina, very solid, five into 420. And Aft Cabin, there was money around for and is very, very solid around that 550 mark. But Giga Kick, a notable drifter, hasn't raced for a year. Interesting. And Remark, the Ladbrokes Racing Club horse, it's won, it's drifted out in the market a lot and it won this race last year. Um, yeah, what's it out to though? Nine dollars. One of the few horses with thousand meter form. Yeah, so it has to be a yeah. great chance at those odds. Mm. What did you? Anything else to add, Dream Team, about this race? A great race, isn't it? No, I like the look of Af Cabin, which is gelded, but it gets right back, and uh, it's not helping today. So, yeah, maybe rem remarks probably good odds now. Yeah, Fizzo, anything to add, mate? No, um, my all up's looking really iffy on Giga Kick, mate. So uh, at the moment, I am sitting back and just watching. How's Stu Ferenci feeling? Stu Ferenci will be sick in the belly. Giga Kick all week long, but hey, stay stay strong, mate. We'll see what hasn't happens got in a couple yet. of minutes. Sure has not. Yep. Hey, Kingsland, can we get an update on the market? Yeah. Um, Giga Kick has continued to drift. Let me just check what Giga's out to um, 460. Bella Dipatina's favourite into 440. Um, I and me continued to be the best back runner in the race into four dollars eighty now, and half cabins five fifty. So it's been a um, it's been a big betting race. These massive fluctuations, which is always good to see. The market's been turned on its head. All right, they're going to fly. Let's go. Race call is ready. 
Yeah, we got the three roughies, first, second, third at the moment, yeah. and then and then all the. Uh, Here up. comes J Mac and Giga Kick. This roughies off and gone. Yeah, can they, they catch them? Now they're up. Dragonstone, Dragonstone. down the outside. I am me up the inside. In front. Bella. Wait. Here comes Bella. I am me off the I am me. I am me. Bella. The pun is new. And Bella. Here comes Bella, the Mars. He's too good, Kieran Ma. He's too good, Kieran Ma. He's Punters too get good, the lot. What a beauty. Wow. Big go. Well done, King. Punters get the lot. Oh, what about Bellini Bettina? How good is she? Wish I got the lot. The dynamics indications. They love it. <laughs> and you'd have to think after that, I, I and me will come into calculations for an Everest slot, wouldn't you? As usual, yep. Yeah. They do. <laughs> well said. Mooney Valley Race 7, the Mackenzie Stakes for the three-year-old Colts and Geldings. Epimel's in public attention are unbeaten Stallion prospects and dominate the market here, King Zone. Yeah. You are most excited about this race on Thursday Woo! for the Saturday set. What's happening now? Uh, let's start with FML's, which I think needs longer. It's been very easy in betting. 3.10 out to 4.40 now. Uh, Angel Capital's been really, really well back. 9 into 4.80. Then we get to the two I'm interested in. Number 8, Stolly Bolly. has been smashed in betting. 8 into 5. And number 5, Red Sea, was really well backed early. It's been a bit easy today. Out to 7.50 now. And the other one... Um, in the markets, public attention, 440 out to six dollars been pretty easy as well. They want three horses here, Angel Capital, Stolly Bolly, and early in betting Red Sea. So let's see what happens. I'm on Red Sea and Stolly Bolly, and I've bet up this race and I'm very, very keen. Ooh, excellent. And Junior, you think this is a bit of a trial for the Caulfield Guineas, right? A lot of these horses, in particular the top two ones, FML's in public attention. Yeah. Bit of a Caulfield Guineas trial, see if they're up to uh a path to though to that spring classic. Yeah, those two in Angel Capital are uh, this is a bit of a warm up for them. Epper Mills is gonna be have to be very good throwing back the fence. Come on, Red. A lot of rump stake in front. Giving Red Sea a little bit of rain. It's responded. Please don't, Richard. <laughs> Please. Angel Capital coming into the three line line. Extreme Diamond travelling pretty well. Yeah. Oh, oh Fausto, wow. yeah. Red's gone. Red's gone. Set up for Bizzusto. Angel Capital. Angel. Maybe. <laughs> Bosto, Angel. Angel, Angel too Capital. strong. Too good. Good horse going forward. Mm, Perfect. Yeah. Race it up very for pretty well nicely. Back. Race okay, it up. A couple bubbles burst then, but what a great Caulfield Guineas trial for uh, Angel Capital. Yeah, not much luck for some stuck behind with rump steak in front of them, but yeah, that race was set up for it and it finished off well. Good to see it's still alive and well. Look forward to hearing from Clint McDonald about Angel Capital yeah. and Benny Mellon. What's the standout feature of what you've just seen from him? One trial. Um, he's still learning what it's about. Uh, we've got to work out whether he's going to be a sprinter or a middle distance horse. So I do have concerns. Is he too brilliant to be a miler, you know? Um, he's just got that electric turn of foot. And for him to do that today against good opposition, um, you know, it's encouraging and uh, he's only going to get better. And he's a big horse and on this tight track, we're a little bit worried about that. But uh, Benny assured me that he'd get the job done and, and he did. Setting the bar a bit high, but do you almost go to the weekend hustle of blueprint and consider whether you can have two bites of that cherry in the spring? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, we're looking at, you know, the, the next option is the Guineas Prelude um, and then into the Caulfield Guineas. So we'll see how he pulls up. Yeah, he's very good colt, this colt. Um, he obviously won very impressive his first start and then we're a bit disappointed with him just because, you know, he didn't really have the tracks and stuff in his favour, but he didn't run to the best of his ability in Queensland and he'd been flying at home and... Um, it was good to see him come out and, and win in the fashion that he did today. Randwick race eight, the Chelmsford Stakes over the famous Randwick Mile. This race is always a path to bigger and better races over the Melbourne Spring and has been won by the likes of Winx, Lonro, Mind Power, Kingston Town, Tullock and Farlap. Zardozzi is our favourite today and for many is the best bet of the day. James Cummings and Godolphin wanted her to win well and then plot a path through the Melbourne Spring. Kings, we've seen a bit of a pattern today, horses mm. that... Uh, looking for further, have been well in the market. Here's another example with Zardozzi. Mm. What do you say? Um, I'm against Zardozzi and the market has a Zardozzi favourite at the moment at 2.30, but it has been a bit easy, about 2.05 out to 2.30. Did touch 2.40 and and found uh, found its price. But I'm, I, th I think still a little bit too short. Going to get back. Not a lot of pace in this race. I'm with um, Buckaroo. I took 8 and 7.50. I'm hoping that Tommy Berry can sit a bit close, and I think it's fantastic each-way odds. Oh, delicious. Hey, Dream Team, what do you think of this race? One of the better races of the day, isn't it? 
Yeah, super tricky race. Not much uh, pace in the race at all. Horses, once again, unsuited at the distance. Um, I'm against Zardozzi. I think Hinge is a good price. So 550 sort of Hinge, I think that's a bet. Very good. And we've got the Swannies going on in the background. They're just starting to come into the game, the Swannies, aren't they? Yeah, um, great man, Paps I'm on punt. the Swans. Popping it's off the inside. Ride, hasn't it? Buckaroo Sneaking every chance the outside the lead for the King. Come back. Come, come back. Ooh. Come on, Tommy. Come on, Tommy. Come on, King. Keep going, Tommy. Keep going. Come on. Uh, find the uh, line. See it out. Oh, oh. oh, I'm saying Buckaroo. I think it was Buckaroo as well. Got its head down on the line, didn't it? Hopefully it, it held was, on. I think it was Buckaroo. It was paddling. What do you reckon, Fitz? Uh, I was betting. <laughs> I think Buckaroo. That's more important. But uh, Zadozzi, a little disappointing. Beautiful ride by J-Mac. Uh, Let's hope we got our head down. And uh, great run by Hinge Dream Team. Your tip before the race. Yep. Had the right run, though. So Here I we go. I'd go past it. Hinge was going to get up on the line. And then get just your head got down. Wrong, Bob. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Held on, Buckaroo. And uh, Adelaide River coming home solidly as well. Team Williams would be happy about that. Mini Valley Race 8, the So You Think Stakes, a tasty little race where favourite Pyrocles is firm consistently from his opening quote of $2.50 on Wednesday. He is always strong second up and after being disappointing first up in the PB Lawrence, he gets his chance to get back on track today. Hey, Fizzle, when I talked about Pyrocles and the PB Lawrence on the Sunday set a few weeks ago, you said he was a bit of a non-winner. Never seems to be able to win. How do you feel about him today in this environment? He's found probably a better better race, probably suits it suits it um, today. It's pretty fancied in the market. He does come out top pick for me. Um, and this race sets up and the way the track's playing looks like it's probably the perfect race for it today. But still, you've got you to take evens every time with a horse that hardly ever wins. It's, it's hard to do. Mm. Dream Team, anything to add, mate? You with or against Pericles today? Uh, well, listening to what Pete, uh, what Fizzer just said then, yeah, I think it sounds okay. The Mooney Valley doesn't play run on very often, mm -hmm. and uh, today you can make ground, so that's in his favour. Who's Pete? How does Pete possibly come into your head? I don't know why I said Pete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now Buffalo River will start rolling. That's the Shin doesn't want to get on the fence. Do you want to be chasing Buffalo River though? No. Uh, not a fence day today. Yeah, not not the day you want to be chasing Buffalo River. Boys. He's got a bit of a lead, Buffalo. Yeah, Orange. mate. Orange, number uh, sorry, independent Junction road in behind two, number pounding. three at two eighty, please. Munamek in behind with uh, Muramasa and uh, immediacy out the back. Two, yeah. three, two, Devoted eight. out the back as well. Attrition's got a lot of work to do, but the pace is on. So you think they're going to get a chance we'll today do. of all days? No, none of that. It's 270 or bust. Here we Take go. He's got him chasing the three. big boy. Just Will Pericles, two, uh, can he cart him up? Not much. He's going to go straight past Buffalo River, but the, are the others going to come and take him on? The chases are not lead. really there. This might be a statement. There's nothing coming. This, yeah. this might be a statement. Wow. Bang. Shin gives him a cut to finish it off. Right race today. Ooh. All right. Well, you've got to give him a big tick for that. A big tick for that. Is he ready to go back to group one quality after that, do you think, boys? No. I Another think, crack at group one or just keep him at that level? Well, I think things suited him today, like we said, so not really. But they'll, they'll have a crack. But uh, well done for the punters that thought today was his day. A lot of people yeah, on the dance said it was his best they? bet today, yeah. This was his race to, to win today. Um, the plan, the planning and for this horse, like we could have run him last week in the Group One, but you know, I think there's a little bit of sentiment to run this horse in this race today, and you know, I just, I'm just glad we got the result. And more importantly, for the horse, he's he's deserved a, a good race. Uh, we ran second in the Doncaster, and he's been placed multiple times at top class. So, look, thoroughly deserved, and. Uh, yeah, I'm um, just just right, like I said. Randwick race nine, the <laughs> Tramway Stakes, and the jewel is back. Amelia's jeweler has her first start for Annabelle Neesham and Rob Archibald after she was moved from Simon Miller in Western Australia. She's been the beaten favourite in her last five starts, yet punters once again think she deserves to be favourite today. King Zone? Yeah, mate. How are you playing this race? 
Um, I've had a. Uh, I'm on Democracy Manifest. Democracy Manifest, yes. At around the ten dollar mark, it's been fourteen in uh, bed early into into eight fifty. Been pretty solid today in betting. Amelia's Jewel's been quite easy in betting. Two fifty. Um, Ladbrokes opened up out to three dollars forty now, and looks like we'll continue to ease. The big guy's been uh, with the Tony Gollan trained Freedom Rally. Six dollars was bet early into. $3.70 and very, very solid in betting. Might even start favourite. Looks that way. They run about equal, I think. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I thought the way the track's playing Democracy Manifest may be not suited so much, but uh, I'm hoping for a bit, bit of luck and get up the fence from Barrier 14, cross and weave a passage through. Anything to add, boys? I guess you, you'd like to see the jewel back to her best, wouldn't you? We'd like to, but things are against a few horses this uh, last few weeks resuming off injuries. Um, Giga Kicks one. Uh, this one's another. Uh, Chris Waller had the favourite last last week, so happy to be against. Mm-hmm. My Oberon smoking in behind Freedom Rally. Oh, good, well spotted. Here we go. Nugget needs some luck as well. It's travelling all right. They top the rise. Amelia's pushed along. She really is having a look. Come at the on, line. Uh, Royal Patronage Come here. On. Patronage. Come on. For Fitz. A... Come on, Royal. Royal. Overseas horse. Kovalika. Should Here be strong. Here comes the jewel. Late. She's going to finish hard. Not hard enough, Rough. Richard. Yeah. Too good. Good the overseas. Well yeah. Done, the overseas. Pretty impressive sure, uh, first up there, Adrian. I think. Sorry? Pretty, Pretty impressive, impressive from the jewel there? No, well, the winner has also no, winner been, super it had been yeah. in the US and the UK. Yeah. And had some great runs in the UK and didn't really go on with it the same in the US and come here and gain Adrian got it firing. What about Kovalika? I think they've run on well first up, both yeah. of them. Amelia, they'd be happy with that Amelia's jewel yeah, first up for sure. Definitely. No, was, that, was, that was a great first up run. And uh, Kovalika's slashing run, he'll uh, yeah, obviously good go and bigger and better things over a bit of distance down in Melbourne and even up in Sydney as well. So, yeah, great race. Moody Valley Race 9, the Group 1 Moya Stakes. We reach the finale of today's episode. And Golden Slipper winner, Lady of Camelot, makes her return as an open-class horse. She has the featherweight of 50 kilograms and looks like she should be able to roll to the lead quite easily. Her main danger is Estriella. Estriella is ridden by Blake Shin, and he knows Lady of Camelot well as he rode her in the slipper. He said in the press this week that he won't be letting the lady have an easy time in front. And King's Own, it's mm. a year ago since we fell in love with Imperatrice. At this meeting last year, my girl, remember she gave Giga Kick Winburn, went straight past her. Mm. And um, Estriella is a little bit like Imperatrice by I Am Invincible and got a bit of a... Yeah, a bit of a feeling about it. She could be something special. We're going to find out We're today, going to find really. out shortly, I yeah. think. Mm. She's got that one big rating from down the straight, but she's been by far and away the best-backed runner in this race. Um, they did bet as much as 350 and he's in now into 320. The notable um, I Wish I Win's been very solid. Second pick mm. at the moment, $5 early and been solid the whole way, being back late now into 440. But the um, interesting horse is... Uh, Lady of Camelot, the early sniper, stepped into the three fifty and came into three dollars, four dollars into three dollars early. So the early snipers aren't always right because Lady of Camelot got back out to five dollars fifty, and it looks like it's got SP at five dollars fifty. I'm with Mornington Glory. I couldn't believe they put up twenty one dollars. I missed that and took twelve dollars today. So my only bet's Mornington Glory, but what a great race! Can't wait. And it's big firmer too, Mornington Glory, isn't it? Into about eight. Been very well backed, yeah. So Estriella and Mornington Glory. Um, are the two best backed runners? I'm just having a look now. Um, Ladbrokes are into eight dollars fifty. Huh? Mornington Glory, so has been backed heavily late. Hey boys, what a race, eh? Anything to add? No, it's a great race, absolutely. Um, Estrella should sit in the right part of the track. Let, hopefully, it uh, announces itself as a as a good horse. Yeah, um, absolutely. Otherwise, yeah, Mornington Glory on the inside for Kings. It's been good for you last week, King. So Mornington Glory's the well, three from three at the valley over a thousand meters, and yep. looks a real thousand meter valley horse. So this is the right setup, and also in the race, the only horse that isn't first up. Well, mm. fitness, and this race obviously has big implications for the Manicato Stakes on Grand Final Eve in a few weeks' time, and also the Everest, of course. So, uh, yeah, let's do it. Couldn't be more excited. Okay, Estrella shows her glory. class. Morning and glory, maybe to the front here. The lady didn't wow. jump that well at all. No, Estrella's now cast three wide. No, yes. cover. wow. Yeah. Johnny Rock is kicking up. Should get the leaders back. Chain of lightning in a nice little spot. Bit of cover. Yeah, yeah awkward for Estrella. Coleman in the three wide line. And how you Sugi getting a succulent suck in behind those runners? Yeah, a lot of people in the den said Coleman was uh, the forgotten horse. Where's I wish I win? Yeah. Second last. Second last and going okay. Cabal is dead last. 
Morning, Morning and Glory's had a pretty easy time in front. Too. Yeah, yeah, wouldn't say they gone that quick. Niggling at the other two. Yeah, Coleman's under pressure. Johnny Rock is smoking his Estrella pipe. Estrella right there. Lady Come on, the Camelot glory. looks awkward. Yeah. Come, Come on. Come on, the glory. And Johnny Rock is going to finish up the game. fence. The fit horse. Kenny, the, Kenny out last. Keep going. Estrella's fighting back. Is that He's Coleman? Coleman. Is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? Late. Oh, I wish oh, I would oh, the Kings on. Oh, the Kings on. The Kings on. Thousand meter specialist. Wow. What a ride. And what a, what a what fantastic a gr- result for Gavin Bedgegood. Eh? Great ride. How you Sugi flashing late but too late. What a great ride. Fantastic. Big well advantage done. leading wow. over thousand I don't meters. Even, don't even think. Mate, the trainer, so Gavin Bedgegood, so thought it could win a group one, but it's done it and done it reasonably easy in the end. A good odds, stuff. Kings. That's your, that's your zone. Nine dollars. <laughs> there he is. What a legend. Good for him. Jesus. And that, uh, was, that was really smart, that, yeah. that ride. Like really it's great. Smart. It sort of just so, panned you know, out. We're going to go to the front. It panned out. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone yeah. didn't. Do you didn't think, think they planned to lead or just panned out? No, I think when I the think inside. They look like they hunted when up. When the inside's off, they don't like want to go as fast. Like, mm. like, they didn't, like, the second horse didn't want to go to the fence. So. Lady Camelot struggled to muster a bit there yeah. as well, over it's a thousand. Slow out. Mm. Race fitness. Is there a query on the two year old form? Yes. Yeah, there always yes. is, yeah. Hey, Yasugi was strong late. Mm. Coleman looked like he was going to get beat 20 lengths. He's actually sort of fought back and nearly run a place. Uh, What's the horse to follow out of that race? Oh, I wish I win was pretty good. Where's he would finish down the middle. Third, I think. Third. Oh, run on to third. You have to get a look. Hey, Yasugi was again. nice. Uh, you have to watch it again, yeah. It's a very bunch finish. 1,000-metre races are um, at the valley. Probably don't want to take too much out of it. And Lady of Camo and Estrella weren't disgraced. They did okay. That was their first up run. You know, mm-hmm. they all... Well, yeah. 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 yeah, I think no, Lady of Camelot's more the disappointment, really. Yep. Lobbed outside the lead in Mornington Glory. Lady of Camelot was under pressure early. Yeah. 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 Brilliant yeah. stuff. Jeez, he's pre- presented in terrific order. Drew Gate won and he flew the lids and just had an easy time of it. Um, fit well. Yeah, I was, I was a benefactor of a well prepared horse for a great bunch of owners. Terrific to get a Group 1 win for Gav. I mean, I think it's his first two. Uh, capped off what was a, a challenging day, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm so wrapped. Gavin Bedgegood joins us after morning. Glory wins the Group 1 Moyer Stakes. You're emotional after the car line. Where are you now? No, I'm pretty good. I felt a, I felt a bit of pressure last time, but um, I was pretty comfortable coming here today. We were the underdog, and... Uh, he seems to always be that way, but um, look, he just took bad luck out of the equation today. He began really well his last two starts, and when he jumped a half in front of him today, there was there was no instruction to leave, but Brandy just used his initiative and went with the horse, and uh, the rest is history. Was your confidence growing from Wednesday morning onwards when you were able to draw inside and think that the plan could unfold as it just has? Very much so. I wanted to sort of draw two, three, four, give us options. Um, one was better than nine, so yeah, I was pretty happy. What's this mean for you and your entire team who've worked so hard and done such an amazing job with so many horses that you haven't started with? Oh, it nearly didn't happen. Like, he was retired, this horse, and um, as I said last time, these owners throw me a bone and uh, great ownership group and um, they'll party hard tonight, no doubt. Can you believe from your former life and what you were doing in far more sterner tests endurance-wise that... Your first group one comes over a 1,000 metres. We've only got two of them in the whole country that are run at this level. Yeah, well, uh, I, I had a great career riding over jumps and loved it, and I, and I still love following the jumps and jumping races. But, uh, yeah, look, we just do what we can with whatever horses get thrown our way. Gav, you've done a tremendous job. This is so well-deserved. Hopefully it's the first of many group ones. Thanks very much. All right, boys, what a fantastic day of racing. Can I get your key takeaways before I let you all go out and party the night away wherever that might be? Kingsley, you want to go first, buddy? Uh, takeaways. Takeaways. Uh, I thought Bella Nipotina was a fantastic run. Mm-hmm. $7 or around that sort of price for the Everest, I think, is, a, is not a bad price. But I have to go back and watch the replays. I'm too busy betting for takeaways at the moment. Leave, leave a few of them for tomorrow. But I thought Bella was a great run, and I thought Manal coming down the centre of a track of the track on a... Um, Fence on Fire Leaders Day was also a great run. And, of course, you'll do a lot of due diligence and all the betting today and find the most interesting races from a punting point of view when we do our show, review show Mondays.com and the Den Mondays. You'll uh, deliver a bit of insight there. The Moyle will be definitely one of them, I can tell you that. There you go. Hey, Fizz, key takeaway out of the day, please, uh, KFC tonight, takeaway. <laughs> and um, on top of that, I'm going to say my takeaway from today is careful betting early when the tracks are going to be dry and biased. Okay. Um, 
it assumes that whenever it's dry everywhere, it's very leaderish. Okay. So always take that into consideration. Right. Betting. Sage advice. Thank you. Dream team, I know you're championing the bit to get out of here. I am, yeah. What do you got I, for us? I touched on it before, but back horses who have had good preps and not like little tiny setbacks. So we've had uh, Fangirl, Giga Kick, Amelia's Jewel in the last couple of weeks. All horses with little setbacks or sort of, I think Fangirl almost died, to, to quote Chris Waller. Um, yeah, you want like a horse with a solid preparation. So I'll uh, remember that coming into next week. All right, Pack, thanks for watching today. And while you're relaxing over the weekend, me and the team will be watching, reading and listening to all the latest news and insight out of today's racing. And we will boil it down to the most important and pertinent points and deliver them to you in our dot .com in the den Monday's review preview show. It is must-watch TV over the spring and I will see you there on Monday. Arvo, up the den. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.